Welcome back, everybody. This is Building a Game Like Cannabalt. I'm Justin. This is part three. I know at the end of the last part, I mentioned we'd be randomly generating new platforms based on the character's properties, the player's properties. However, as I get older, I've also gotten more forgetful, because before we do that, we actually have to upgrade our collision detection system so that we can actually jump off of and land on new platforms properly. You see, right now, what we have for collision detection is actually pretty crappy. You know, we have a hard-coded value that kind of represents a height that we can never fall below. And sure, that might work for one or two games out there, but for us, it is pretty crappy. We're going to want something more robust that'll let us do a few extra cool things. And since we're pushing the randomly generated platforms off until the next part, hopefully now we'll have two smaller parts that each have their own focus, similar to the perfect jump, instead of one longer part that has its focus split among multiple ideas. All right, no more intro. Let's get to work. Just two minor things before we begin. My distance text is actually behind this sprite over here. And that's not good. So let's update our canvas to actually, you see how it also has a sorting layer similar to all of our sprites. So we're just gonna make it very much on top. Was that like 100,000? I don't know how many sorting layers there actually are. All right, there you go, 32,000. And then the second thing, heading over to our source code, by popular demand, we're gonna increase our font size. I'm not sure how big to make it to where I can't even work anymore. I'm gonna go with 150%. I guess I can manage. Let's see how this works and you can also let me know if you like it or dislike it. Okay, so very briefly, the collision detection method that we'll be using is known as ray casting. If you don't know what that is, you can think of it as a line or a beam shooting out from a specific point into a specific direction until it actually hits something. And then w once it does, you get back information about what it actually hit. And then we'll be doing that to shoot a beam from our player down looking for a platform to land on. All right, heading over to our player script. We're gonna be looking for a ground when we're actually in the air, so when we're not grounded. So first we can comment out our primitive collision detection that we have here. And let's set up the basic components needed for raycasting. We'll need an origin. And it's gonna be our current position, basically. The only difference here is that I'm going to, and I'll be able to explain this better later, but I'm gonna add a little bit of space here, basically shifting the ray origin to be just in front of the player. The X position is just a little ahead of the player. And remember what I said in the first part about giving the player the benefit of the doubt because they're not perfect computers? This kind of plays into that, so that if they're trying to land on a specific platform and they're judging it in their head, we're giving them just a little bit of buffer space so that they can land on a platform just before they're actually able to really land on the platform. And you'll see that work later. All right, the next thing we'll need is an actual direction that we wanna go. And we're simply gonna say up. I know that in reality, we should be casting our ray downward because that's where the floor will be relative to us, but our velocity will be negative, so it'll work itself out. And then we're gonna need a distance. And the distance that we wanna draw our, draw our ray, the distance that we wanna cast our ray is how far we could possibly move this frame. This way, between this frame and the next frame, anything that might be in between that distance will get caught by the ray. And this is just a duplicate of this. As you can see, our position is updating by this amount, which means that's the furthest that we can possibly move in a given frame. So that's how far we're gonna also cast this ray. And then we're gonna use Unity's built-in ray casting. And Unity's ray cast returns this ray cast hit 2D object, which basically just gives you info about what the ray cast actually hit. So physics two, since we're working in 2D and we're gonna use 2D colliders for this, we have to use physics 2D and raycast hit 2D. Just be sure to make that distinction and you're not doing physics.raycast, you're doing physics 2D.raycast, depending on you know your situation. Ray origin, ray direction, and distance. And the raycast hit 2D will have a collider component if a collision actually happened. 
So just check if that collider exists. And that's the basics of getting a Raycast working. So once we're actually hitting something, we know that we've technically landed. We're gonna do some extra stuff here, but we're not ready for it yet because we haven't actually created a ground yet that we can possibly collide with. So let's go and do that. All right, coming back over here, we're gonna make yet another sprite. So this will be our ground test, ground test. We're gonna give it a new ground script. There we go. We actually don't have to open it at all. We just need it to exist for, for now for the purposes of colliding with it. But we will give it the parallax script so it can actually move. We'll move it differently later, but this is just to make it move for testing purposes. So 2D object, sprite, square. We're gonna give it a dark color. And we're gonna move it also very far in the foreground. And then we're gonna make it very huge because it represents, in Cannibalt, these are the actual buildings that you're landing on. So let's get some height there. And that'll be good for testing, right? And then the last thing that this thing will need is an actual collider. Again, 2D, right? Because we're using 2D colliders, we're using 2D physics. All right, and this is the collider that's gonna come back when we're actually checking in our Raycast for whether this collider is null or not. And now that we have this collider, we can grab other components off of this game object. So we're gonna actually look for the ground. Grabbing other components off the same game object. We attached our ground component just in case we're colliding with other game objects that aren't really the ground. If this ground actually exists, then we know we landed on our ground. And our landing code is right here. And then we can go ahead and delete this crappy primitive thing. One last thing we wanna do here is to be able to actually see this thing in the scene view. So Unity has this helpful debug function for drawing rays. So the start is the origin. And the direction is actually the direction multiplied by the distance. This draw ray function doesn't separate the direction and the distance. So we just combine them here. And then we have to specify a color. We're gonna draw it red. So let's actually see it. There it is. And you can see that it's in the center a right adjusted by that buffer that we gave it, and it's pointing down because we're currently falling. There we go, there we go. Should be inside this collider now. However, it looks like we did something wrong. Oh, the, we're colliding with this box collider, most likely anyway, we're colliding with this box collider that's on this square and not on our actual ground test that has the ground script that we want. All right, so let's ditch, let's exit play mode. Let's ditch this box collider for this even better box collider. Where is it? I can't see it. Why is it over there? I see, I made another one of these zeroing out mistakes. I move this object instead of this object. Always move your parent objects. This guy, move him to zero, zero, zero. Move this to zero, zero, zero. And then we can safely move this person now, this ground. Put him just below the player here, where we want to land on. And then we'll make this something more appropriate. Let's say 50 by 50, 50. Move this, <laughs> having trouble. And then 50, 50. There we go. There we go, we landed. And we fell off, perfect.
However, as you can see, as we're going, yeah, we fell off, but if we don't jump, then we're never not grounded to be able to check if we can fall off. So what we'll need for this, well, at least the way that I'm gonna do it, is to have a second raycast for when we are on the ground. So let's just copy and paste all this code. If we are grounded, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, except now we're gonna give the player the benefit of the doubt in the opposite direction, basically allowing them to run off the end of the platform just a little bit before they actually fall and can't jump anymore. We're gonna do all the same things. We're gonna color this one yellow so we can tell the difference. And then what we're gonna say is sort of the opposite. If we're not colliding with anything, then we're not grounded. And this ray will specifically be designed to look for <clears throat> nothing below us, basically. All right, we land. And you can see it there working, kind of just hovering there. And as soon as we get out of that range, so during all these moments, we can still jump, we can still jump, we can still jump. And there we go. Now we're falling and you can see our other ray is activated now, looking for more ground and we're not gonna find it. And the last thing we wanna do is actually use this specific height where the collider is as our new ground height. We don't just wanna land on the predefined ground height that we already have. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be dynamic for every single platform that we come across. So some platforms are gonna be up here, some are gonna be way down here, and some are gonna be right in the middle. So we're gonna need our ground to know about that. So let's tell our ground to calculate its own floor height or should I say ground height? Won't be anything. And then as soon as we start, we're gonna calculate it. Let's grab our collider. Um, call this collider. We're gonna grab our own collider. And then in order to calculate our ground height, we're gonna take advantage of our collider having a size equal to the size of this square. So we're basically gonna take our position and add up half of the height of this collider, right, this size, this Y size property. We're gonna add half of that to this position and that's gonna be exactly that height. So our ground height, is going to equal plus divided by two. And then when we land, let's make this public so the player can grab it. When we land, land, our new ground height is going to equal round ground height. Let's see if we can land on it. There it is, we're right on it. And we don't make it to the next one. But that's basically all we need for the ground collision detection. If we, well, hold on, let me, let me try to set up a little test here. Um, we'll just duplicate ground test. Move them over here we should be able to jump right to it. Let's give it a shot. And now we have a new ground height and a new ground height and a new ground height. Cool, and we can just keep this loop going over and over because these are parallaxing items. I could just fall off, boom. I've noticed something here. My velocity seems off. Yeah, my velocity is still negative because I didn't reset it when I landed. That's why I'm like falling incredibly fast when I fall. I don't know if you noticed, boom, like that. Boom, you don't want that. We want to reset that. So 
here's where we land, so let's make sure to zero that when we land. So that we don't have to actually jump to reset. Let's try that again. There we go, that's more of a parabolic looking fall. Nice smooth, there's immediate, not that immediate drop that we had before. Let me try to pause it here. Well, it doesn't really matter. If we ever miss one of these heights, we're basically dead. There, oh, no, oh, we caught it because <laughs> we don't actually have the collision. Oh, they're all out of sync now. We don't actually have the collision with the, um, with the side of the building worked out yet. So we're just gonna infinitely be able to catch on to those colliders as we're falling into them. And we'll fix all that in future parts. In the next part, as promised, we're not gonna have these ground tests. We're gonna actually be randomly generating them based on the player's properties. Again, calculating how high can the player possibly jump, how far can the player possibly jump, and generate new grounds based on that. All right, that was our upgraded collision detection system so that we can dynamically land on different heights. That being said, I hope you learned something cool. Um, if you like this video, like it, subscribe to this channel. There's about two to three more parts left before we're actually done with this thing. And then you'll have your game that's like Cannibal, and you can take it from there and basically make it anything you want. And that's it for me. I'm out of here. I'm hungry. I got to eat breakfast. Take care, guys.